Jehovah's Witness like to claim that they're Christians, but is that actually true? We're going to look at a conversation between a pastor and a Jehovah's Witness talking about the Bible. Yeah. So we believe that, that Jesus, Jehovah created Jesus first, yeah. and then through Jesus everything has been created. So it's interesting, that's actually an amazing text. Um, yeah, so let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host K Dub, and today we're going to do a comparative view of Christianity and Jehovah's Witness. Uh, by comparison, we're going to do it by responding to a video with someone I've respected as a pastor, uh, Jeff Durbin. I think his evangelism is top-notch just because of his ad attitude, his demeanor, and the sound doctrine he uh, does. I had someone recently say, hey, I don't know much about Jehovah's Witness. Like, hey, let's you know, do something on Jehovah's Witness. So this this video is particularly for them. And so without further ado, let's, let's just get into it. It's going to be a good video here. Um, like I'm telling Chris, we don't, we're not here to really recruit people to be your witnesses. We're more important about people getting to the Bible. Get into the Bible. I just you make your own life, life, but get into the Bible. The Bible helps you find a way. Which, to which Bible? Well, we, we, we support, we have our own New Testament, but mm -hmm. we support the King James. Do you? And that's the verse. I mean, we, 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 we don't tell people to change the Bible. Because Genesis 1 and 1 is the same. You might say the Lord spoke to the Lord. We might say Jehovah spoke to Jesus. Now, I, again, I don't know much about this gentleman here, this Jehovah's Witness, but there are numerous changes in the Jehovah's Witness uh, translation than the actual Bible. Um, you know, I think of one off the top of my head, John 1, uh, I believe verse 3, where it talks about Jesus creating all things. Well, in the Jehovah's Witness translation, it says Jesus created all other things. So one is comprehensive, right? Your Bible that you possess versus their Bible is, you know, they believe Jesus was created and then he created everything else. And so, but I mean, that's just one example, but there are numerous differences versus, you know, your ESV, your KJV, your NASB, you know, solid biblical uh, translations that try to stick to, uh, you know, the earliest manuscripts, then your Jehovah's Witness translation. It's not, it's, it's not a good translation. So, you know, he's like, hey, so, you know, it's all the same. He's going to go on and say, you know, it's basically the same. But the content is still the same. Mm -hmm. John 3, 16 is still the same content. Mm -hmm. The difference might be, you might believe in the Trinity, I might believe in the, the Father and the God, Son is different. But if you look at the content, it's basically 90% the same. So we never tell anybody you got to change your Bible. Because mm. when I first started studying, I was using the New International Version Bible. You know? So, and when we talk the New uh, World Translation, we'll tell people, we're not, when we use the word translate, it's translating, not changing. In other words, it just took a lot of these and thou's of King James. So he, he, seem, he seemingly believes all the, you know, the New World Translation is uh, just taking out all the these and the thou's. That's, that's really it. Uh, no. Uh, there's, there's a lot more, it's, uh, you know, biases, you know, that are... Uh, you know, in the NWT, uh, that again, it's going to come out in this conversation here. Made it simple language, but the message is always the same. So we don't, we tell people to get into a Bible. You, know, you get a King James Bible, fine. You ask for fine. So you would accept the King James? If, if I'm studying with you and you want the King James Bible, I definitely accept that. You, okay. So yeah. you don't think there's any real differences between the King, the. Think the biggest difference is, is uh, how we see God. Because the King. Yeah, which is a huge di difference. Now, he kind of admits now here, um, you know, okay, well, there is a huge, there is a difference, and the difference is just how we see God. He, but he kind of like downplays it. It's a huge difference, you know. Uh, Jehovah's Witness theology, classic Jehovah's Witness theology, uh, you know, they believe Jesus was a created being. He is not, uh, Yah, he is not the Almighty God, but he is kind of some some God like creature, right? He he himself was created. Versus, uh, it's classic Arianism, right? If you're familiar with that, rather in Christianity. Right, uh, historic biblical Christianity. We believe Jesus Himself is Yahweh, though He is not the Father. Again, th this is going to come out in this conversation, and so that's that's quite a big difference. Being Creator, the the Almighty God versus some kind of you know. I mean, I hate to say it in this crass way, but this is kind of sign of kind of like demigod, uh, which you know the Jehovah's Witness kind of has. You know, they, matter of fact, they're they're kind of polytheistic in some sense. Uh, because it's a henotheism, which henotheism is in the class of polytheism. Um, but they kind of have Jesus as, again, a lower God. You know, he's God, but lower God, right? 
Then says the Lord spoke to the Lord, capital Lord, L O R D, the smaller Lord. But Jehovah's Witness did when he researches, they found that with capital L O R D, because in King James, in um, Psalms 83 18, it does say Jehovah, mm -hmm. in King James. Mm -hmm. So, that's an old English, uh, yeah, even in Duma, the Tetragrammaton. Yeah, so, yeah. so, with, now I'm not the person who did it, so I'm trying to be clear. When the brothers of the Jehovah's Witnesses way back in the 1900s started looking, researching what was the right words, wherever they saw the capital L O R D, the smaller they did put Jehovah's name in the capital R G, and the uh, the smaller they put Jesus. So that's yeah. a new translation. We didn't change the the, 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 the verbiage to get there. Well, uh, and, and this is where it actually gets you in trouble because you know you, you know you, they, he wants to say in the Old Testament where you have like. In their translation, the, uh, L O R D, it's signifying that's Yahweh. You know, they say Jehovah, right? Um, well, the problem is you have passages like that that are speaking of Jehovah, uh, quoted in the New Testament about Jesus. And I'll give you one for example. And I've, I, matter of fact, I've used their translation to show them the problem they have. Uh, matter of fact, let me look this up real quick. Uh, in the N W T, Psalm one hundred two. Psalm 102 because it's 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 perfect for it because uh, you know they can't get around all the uh, all the uh, you know you know the <laughs> mistranslations of there you but what you want to do is go to Psalm 102 in their translation Psalm 102 and go to verse 24 and following where it says I said oh my God uh, do not do away with me in the middle of my life uh, you whose years span all generations. Long ago, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain just like a garment. Uh, you will remain just. Yeah. Sorry. It says they will perish, but you will remain just like a garment. They will all wear out just like clothing. You will replace them and they will pass away. Uh, verse 27. But you are the same and your years will have no end. Uh, you go from verse 21 and 22 is speaking of Jehovah. And just to be clear, you can ask them, do you guys believe this is Jehovah? And I did this. They say, absolutely. It is Jehovah. Well, the problem you have is you go to Hebrews 1 and that passage verses 8 through 11, 8 through 12 is actually quoted of the son. So if Psalm 102 is speaking about Jehovah, the almighty God, and it's applying it to the son, the conclusion is Jesus is the almighty God. It doesn't help your case. Okay. But they put the LOD and then and then in New Trans they took a lot of these and dials because that seemed to be confusing. So but I say the King James because we, we stuck with that King James Bible. And we said, What does it say in your Bible? But when Chris says his Bible said a lot of what my Bible said. Yeah. I'm not too sure what the Bible Chris has in his um, phone. I'm assuming it's King James. I don't know what Bible he has yeah. in it. So we would never let's say if I was a study with you, oh, you got to play with the King James Bible. You got to play with my Bible. No. It's not it's the good God's word. But we don't want to get into debate about, you know, if you want to be in the Trinity and I believe in one God, we can do that. We can still get out of the Bible. But yeah. we're not trying to change you. We're just trying to say, here's what the Bible says. Can I ask you a question? I've had, a, I've had friends, Jehovah's Witnesses, good relationships for many, many years. Um, one of the things I found interesting was the New World Translations, um, some of the additions the New World Translations has made um, in terms of, like, the person of Christ. So, for example, I, I would we, we would believe as Christians historically that Jesus is uh, eternal God and he created everything in existence. Mm -hmm. But my, my Jehovah's Witnesses friends believe that Jesus is is not the eternal God. Yeah, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe uh, Jesus is eternal. But the problem is you have, uh, you know, passages like Hebrews 1 speaking about the eternality of the Son, of, of Jehovah, right? And so, yeah, they don't believe Jesus is, uh, you know, he's eternal. He came into existence at one point. Uh, which is very interesting, you know, when you get into issues of salvation, how could a created being save man? How could a, you know, created, you know, so all these issues like that. Um, and that um, he didn't create everything in existence. And the New World Translation seems to add words to the text to um, to change some of that. If you read in Galatians 1.15, yeah. it says, Jesus is the, uh, uh, in, uh, how to put it? Uh, Firstborn of all creation. Yeah. Yeah. So we believe that, that Jesus Jehovah created Jesus first, yeah, before, and then through Jesus, everything is going to be created. So it's interesting. That's actually now many people don't understand this issue of firstborn. You know, Jehovah's Witness love to go there, and I, and I actually love when they go there because it gives it gives me a great example to show uh, what firstborn means. It is not speaking in this passage of a sequential order, rather of a preeminence. And how do we know this? Well, just a few verses down, in verses uh, so. They want to go to first verse 15 where it says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
Well, the problem is you have verse 18, which speaks of Jesus being the firstborn from the dead. Well, we know Jesus was not the first one to rise again. Lazarus rose before, you know, Jesus did. And so they have a problem and they're going to end up having to interpret uh, firstborn either two, two different ways in literally three verses without any kind of, uh, you know, shift or change. Again, firstborn here is speaking of preeminence. Jesus is the greatest of all creation because he's God who came into creation, right? It is the incarnation, right? He's the preeminent of the dead, right? Firstborn of the dead because of who rose from the dead. Um, and so, again, um, they, you know, th but these are great ways to teach and instruct and to point out the inconsistency when, you, when you're talking to a Jehovah's Witness. But you got to know these things, right? Amazing text. Um, That's what we look at. Yeah, so Colossians 1. 15, I think it is. Uh, yeah, so 15 says, um, yeah, it's Christ, image, yeah, we have, we, in whom we have redemption through forgiveness of sins. So this is the thing I've always been curious about. Um, he's the Im image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. The word there, firstborn, is prototokos. It doesn't mean first created. Right. It means preeminent one over all things. For by him all things were created, Jesus. All things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Yeah, so again, just to go back to the passage, it literally, it's, 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 it's exhaustive. Right. So it literally is going to say anything that has come into existence, Jesus has created it. You know, this is why they have to say for by him, all other things were created. That's why the Jehovah's Witness have to add that word in there to get around this issue, because it's clearly exhaustive. Anything in heaven, Jesus created it. Anything on earth, Jesus created it. visible. Anything that has come into creation, Jesus has created. It. And matter of fact, he's before everything. I mean, this is only descriptive of Yahweh, um, very clearly, right? But again, they're going to get to some of these things. Is Good conversation. That, uh, do you have a New World Translation? Yep. If, uh, in the New World Translation, it says all other things, which is which actually isn't in the Greek text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I, I'm not an expert. I wouldn't know. To be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> so that's, I guess that's one of the things we're curious about as Christian ministers is. Right. So so he doesn't know, and that's fair. Uh, I you know one of the things I do appreciate with this uh, gentleman here, Jehovah's Witness, he was he was very nice. He was kind. You know when he didn't know something, he wasn't trying to make it up. Uh, you know, and so hey, he doesn't know, but still, this is a time to educate. Like hey, I know you don't know, but I'm telling you that this word is not in uh, the earliest manuscripts of uh, the term other, which is alos in the Greek. It's not in the text. It's actually, it's, it's inserted by the Jehovah's Witness. And as far as my knowledge, they're the only translation that adds this word into their translation. Um, very interesting. Is um, that, because you, you, you made a stellar point. You said Satan will always take things and make it look like the truth, just enough truth, and then spin it and twist it to deceive you. And so I think that'll be one of our concerns is who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Who is he? And you know, like Mormons, you're here, you probably run into Mormons all the time, right? They believe, they believe different than you and I both. They believe that Jesus is Lucifer's brother, one God among many gods. You can become a God one day, just like Jesus, just like the Father. Seven devils of heaven. Yeah, yeah, three different levels of heaven. And they believe that they're- I didn't say seven devils of heaven. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they, they say they believe that you, uh, you have to work to become a God yeah, one I, day. I have no idea about that, but yeah. yeah. I am going to have to respond and react to some Mormon content. Let me know if you would like that if you're just watching this, but I, I do have something planned, but just let me know if you like that. But so what's interesting is that in the first century, the Apostle Paul warned the early church in 2 Corinthians 11, he was worried about them that they would... Yeah, he was worried about them that they would actually believe in another Jesus, oh. a different gospel. Uh -huh. And so I guess that's what I, because I'm always curious, because Jehovah's Witnesses, you guys are so passionate, you're zealous, you're, you're just sweet, sweet people. But I think that when we talk about the Jesus we believe in, we believe in one God, eternally existing as three eternal persons. Jesus existed forever ago, and he created everything. But it's interesting because the, the Watchtower adds words, say, to a text like Colossians, where the text says Jesus created all things. The Watchtower says he created all other things. Yeah, you know, just to reiterate what Jeff is saying is not only do they add to the text, right, the, the addition creates a different Jesus, right? You see why this is dangerous? And, you know, I know we're in the day and age where people are like, hey, you know, we have these differences on who we, on who God is. We can just kumaya. And that's not what the Bible says. 
you know, if someone has a different Jesus, we're not to fellowship and partake with them. You know, we can't just, we don't have the liberty to make up what we like about Jesus and say, well, it's still Jesus. Absolutely not. Outside of himself. Yeah, all other things. So let me ask you something. When he died, who resurrected him? <clears throat> he says, um, he says, you destroy this temple to the Jews. He says, in three days, I will raise it up again. Uh-huh, but can a dead man be resurrected themselves? Well, Jesus said that he did. Well, no, but notice what the passage said. No, he, he kind of gets away from this issue. Jesus says, right? He, he, he proclaims he will raise himself again. Now, I, there are passages in the Bible which speaks to the Father raising Jesus, the Son raising Jesus, and also the Spirit raising Jesus. What I hold to essentially is that it was a Trinitarian resurrection, that each member can be credited with the resurrection of the Son. And so there's, there's no issue there. Um, again, so can Jesus raise himself from the dead? Yes, he's God. That, but did, what does it say that he resurrected himself? He, he said, well, he, he said I would raise myself yeah, up. Yeah, you make a good point. Yeah. I would raise myself up. But yeah. I see, and from the dead. What I found, especially if you believe in the Trinity, you believe in three and one. Yes, sir. Yeah. And what I found is that very rarely do we ever convince anybody not to be a Trinitarian, and very rarely do convince us not to be one. What I like to talk about. You believe in one God, one person. And I believe, I believe the Holy Spirit is not a living entity. I don't, I don't. So, no, notice for, for Jehovah's Witness, they deny the deity of the Son. Jesus is not God. Uh, not not the not in any real biblical way, and then they also deny that the spirit actually is a you know a conscious person. He's just some kind of force out there, some kind of energy, not a conscious person that you know is uh, greed when we sin. Um, you know, is he doesn't speak. You know, none of that, none of that. You know, which the Bible says the spirit does. He he gets greed. He you know you can lie to the spirit. You know, he speaks, he guides. It's very personified personification language to a person. Um, and so that's interesting. But they're about to dive into this issue, which I think is uh, very good and interesting. Let's check this out. Any place that said that, that, that so do you believe... Like okay, this will help me then. Do you believe that um, Jesus is a God? He is a God, but he's the almighty God. There's only one almighty God. The Bible says Job is the almighty God. There's a difference. Really? In the a by God. Yeah, it, 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 I can't find it after that right now, but I can find it because one in Christians said there are many gods, but there's only one almighty God. Yeah, and the Bible also says in the psalmist that those many gods, the, go the gods of the nations are idols. They're not actually, they're not actually gods. Uh, uh, Paul talks about those, the, you know, these so-called gods. They're not actually, you know, gods, you know. And so, I, I mean, if you, ha if you actually hold what he's saying, it's, it's, it's some kind of form of polytheism, you know, again, or henotheism. He Interesting. So, Do you know in in, uh, in Revelation it calls Jesus the Almighty God? I'm not sure. In the Book of Revelation, um, it talks about Jesus, who's but the Almighty but, God. But when he says, "I'm talking to the Father," who's he talking about? He's talking to the Father. So is that another person? Another person, yes. But he's so, the same person as he's talking. No. To? Yeah, and that's actually that, a powerful that, that's thing. Like a confused. No. So he says, "Hey, you know, so is Jesus the same person as the Father?" You know, essentially. You know, oftentimes when you're, uh, you know, get into apologetic work, you're dealing with, you know, I'm going to call it what it is, dealing with cults, you're dealing with uh, unbelievers. Oftentimes you find yourself having to have, having to do a lot of uh, tilling the ground. What do I mean by that? Is you have to do a lot of correction on presuppositions they have about what you believe. You know, you've ever you've ever done that. You know, you're having a conversation with someone says, well, you believe this. And it's like, wait, hold on. No, no, I don't. I actually believe the opposite. You know, and so a lot of times in apologetic work, it's correcting your uh, opponent's misunderstandings about what you believe. Uh, the apostles had to do that, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. He's talking to himself? Well, that's interesting because, you know, um, I have a lot of friends who are Mormons. Yeah. And we have a lot of Mormons in Phoenix. I don't know if you know that. I mean, a I know, lot. I've heard about it. Oh, um, yeah. And Mormons and my, my Mormon and Jehovah's Jove Witness friends seem to believe um, that Christians believe in modalism. What's that mean? Modalism was one of the first heresies rejected by the Christians in the second century of the church. And that's the idea that God sort of exists in modes. Right? He's one God, one person, uh -huh. and it's, sometimes he's the father, and then he takes off that mask, and now he's the son, and he oh, takes off that never, mask, never heard about and that. he's a spirit. So, like, it's what he just described. You know, he just didn't know it by name. But yeah, Christians, we are not modalists. The Bible is not modalistic. Uh, Jesus is not the father. Uh, the father is not the spirit. Jesus is not the spirit, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just a good, right there is a, a good little, uh, you know, diagram to help people see, see this issue. Uh, but yeah, modalism was rejected by the early church. Uh, more importantly, it, well, it is rejected by scripture.
And those my, my Mormon friends will say, Jeff, who's Jesus talking to in the Garden of Gethsemane? And I'll say, well, Jesus is talking to the Father, the one he's been in eternal relationship with from all eternity. And they'll say, well, he's not talking to himself, and Christians have never believed that Jesus is the Father. We believe that there are three eternal, co-equal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the powerful texts that says that is John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, he was always there, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Yeah. How about John uh, 1 14? It says that he is the. Uh... Now, if you read a Jehovah's Witness translation, it will say the word was with God and the word was a God. But there is no indefinite article in the Greek which would have to have that to, to make that the case. It's, there is actually a definite article which would clearly make it the God or, you know, in the Greek in the beginning to mean to literally translate it. I mean, in the, you know, in the Greek, it'd be in the beginning was the word and the word was was with the God and um, and God was was the word, you know, and so yeah, so they, they you know they want to have that be the case, but it's it's you know no indefinite article in the Greek. It's the son of a uh, I forgot what word he's used. He's the son of a God. It says um, John one fourteen says and, and and the word God became flesh and dwelt among us. But in John I think John one eighteen is that. might be what you're pointing. Sorry, the, so he he had said the word was uh, uh, you know he was a hold on let me let me go back and see what he said. Was, that was an interesting. The son of a I forgot what word he's used. He's the son of a God. Yeah, nowhere does the Bible say that Jesus is a son of a God. I mean. Because now that would mean the Father is not the God, but a God. It says, um, John 1, 14 says, and, and, and the Word, God, became flesh and dwelt among us. But in John 1, I think John 1, 18 is, might be what you're pointing to, where it says, um, He's the only begotten God. And now the word there, only begotten, means, in the Greek, it's, it's uh, monogenes theos, and it means the unique and one-of-a-kind God. Yeah, many people have been trapped up by the issue of Jesus being the only begotten Son of a God. As if that speaking about Jesus entering in, you know, be, we think of begotten like so and so begat this person. So, but that's not what the word is actually indicating in that text. It's actually, as Jeff said, it's pointing out to the uniqueness of the Son. There has never been anyone like Christ, um, and so it's speaking of his uniqueness, his one of a kindness, uh, not his entering in, into creation. And so many people have uh, made that mistake when speaking of the begottenness of the Son. Who is in the bosom of the Father? It does also mean the only created. No, no, no. Uh, the word monogamous theos doesn't mean created. It means um, unique and one of a kind. So it says, the unique and one of a kind God, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has made the Father known. So it's interesting because in that text, John one. It says, Jesus always existed from all eternity with the Father. It's internal fellowship with the Father. And then he says, and he was God. But an interesting thing is in the, uh, the Watchtower's translation, it says he was a God, mm -hmm. which uh, no Greek scholar in the world would translate it as a God. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's, in the Greek, it's, it's really, really powerful. In Archean Halagos, forever ago, Jesus was already there. And he was poston theon toward the Father, an intimate relationship with the Father. And kai uh, theos ein halagos means, and God was the Word. The Word was God. Um, so it's just one of those instances where we, we love our Jehovah's Witnesses. For yeah, John 1 1 is powerful. Uh, I, I wouldn't even argue. John 1 1 through 18 is very powerful when you actually see what John is doing. He's, uh, you know, he's presenting Christ as not just some mere human. But the God man, who, you know, someone who enters into creation, uh, who who him who he himself is God, that's speaking of the word, you know. And so, you know, this amazing relationship that the father and the son, you know, this face to face prostan theon or this, uh, you know, face to face relationship they had towards one another um, is indicated in John one. And so and, and you know, I believe John uh, John is, you know, being a Jew is uh, quoting uh, Genesis 1. We have, we have this in the beginning, right? John is picking up on that and actually making it more clear of what's going on uh, from from that point. And where it seems like we believe in two different Christs, uh -huh. right? And I think you'd agree with that. We, well, we believe I, in I different... Two, I, mean, I'm not, I mean, see, I'm not really that versed in the Trinitarian thought, but all, I'm, all I'm saying to you is we believe there's a Father, there's a Son, there's a Holy Spirit. Right. We don't believe there's three in one. Three persons, yeah, one God. There are three, there are three different, and we don't, 
I haven't found anything that says the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is a living entity in itself. Oh. I haven't seen that myself. Have you read John 14? I probably have, but I can't read that. But Where Jesus says, Yeah, notice, notice the language of the Spirit cannot be said in any way of a force. Uh, not literally, that is, you know, but, but watch the language that Jeff brings out about the Spirit. Um, your, your helper will come. Yeah, he says, uh, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will guide you into all truth. He will convict the world of sin and righteousness. So that yeah, but notice that. The Spirit is guiding. Forces don't guide. Uh, forces don't convict you of sin. You know, God does, you know, which is the Spirit of God. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit a he. What about in Genesis? It said the act of force. What is the act of force in Genesis 1, 2? No, it doesn't say act of force. Yeah. It says the Spirit was hovering over the so face is, of the waters. The but notice, notice, because he, he, seemingly that's what the uh, Jehovah's Witness translation says. I haven't looked at that, but it's not speaking of some act of force that was hovering. Again, the, the, the Hebrew, the, the Genesis 1 does not say that. So again, this actually shows you how their translation muddies the waters when it comes to the nature of God. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. So is that a living entity? Oh, he's a, he's a living person, living being. So there's the being hovering over God. Over that so uh, so it's, the Bible teaches that there's only one God. We agree with that, right? Um, and that yet the Bible calls the Father God, it calls the Son God, it calls the Holy Spirit God, and yet it always makes a distinction between the three persons. It never says the Father is Jesus. Where does it say the Holy Spirit is God? Um, well, there's numerous places. I would say the, the, the one you pointed to in Genesis 1 shows the Holy Spirit was actively... Now, I, I, as I was watching this the first time, I'm, I'm thinking the same text that uh, you know Jeff was going to bring up, Acts 5. Acts 5 is a clear text that indicates the deity of the Holy Spirit, but I'll let Jeff draw this out. ...in creation. And then another example of statement, you, you know this one, when Peter was uh, with Ananias and Sapphira, and he said, you know, why have you lied? Oh, he, says, day, day. he says, when you lied to the Spirit of God, you didn't lie to men, but to God. Yeah. But notice that they lied to the Holy Spirit, and then he goes on to say, they lied not to man, but to God, right? Indicating the person that they lied to, the Spirit, is God himself. And the Holy Spirit of God talks to Paul. An active force can't speak. And the Holy Spirit of God tells Paul where to go. Jesus says, he will convict the world of sin and, sin and righteousness. He will be in you. He will guide you into all truth. So Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as a he. But how, as a how about that, every time Jesus talking to the Father, do the will of the Father, who yeah. talking about? Yeah, he's talking with the Father. But there's the same person. No, no, no. That yes. So you, you can see that this gentleman, he's been in more than likely in drenched in his uh, Jehovah's Witness. And he's been told all his life that the that Christians believe that Jesus is the Father. So again, like I said, you have to correct a lot of stuff when you're talking to people who are in different you know, cults, uh, different religions, and even unbelievers. A lot of time, that may be mainly what you're doing for a while, especially if you get uh, ample opportunity to speak to the same person. It might be a lot of time, again, tilling that ground, planting seeds and saying, you know, and correcting a lot of uh, mishap. That's that's the interesting thing is that uh, Christians have never taught that. Well, I've, I've had Trinitarians tell me that. Yeah, you probably. I'm yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's it's unfortunate. I agree with you. I've had I've had people who. And I, and I think that's where Claudia and Jeff. Let me say this: If they said Jesus is the Father, you weren't speaking to a Trinitarian. And we could talk all day. This is where I get confused with many different religions. The Jehovah's Witness is either right or we're wrong. I'm not saying we're all right. I'm but basically the same. If you go to talk to the Jehovah's Witness in Italy. We may have a different, but we're not going to have a different doctrine. So if we're wrong, we're wrong. Worldwide. Right. Okay, you know what I'm saying? We're wrong, we're wrong worldwide, right? Right. But when I talk to many different religions, including Trinitarians, I get so many different variations. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because historically... Because I don't know which one is... Well... You know, if, I was, if I was listening to the let's say if I was... Let's just, let's just say I wasn't your witness. Yeah. I'm on you guys with me and you, you give me just what you told me. Yeah. Oh, that sounds real great. Then I go to Kekaha and others. Oh, no, they were wrong. Right. They're not the right Trinitarians. Let me tell you, this Trinitarian uh, of philosophy. Right. Okay, no, so essentially the argument he's getting at is, uh, you know, hey, you know, there's all these Christians, they believe different stuff, but us Jehovah's Witness, we're, we're more in uniformity. We believe the same exact thing, which is actually very common in cults where it's like they're, they're all in lockstep. There's no kind of variation. But again, uh, it doesn't assume they're right. And I go to Kilauea. Well, but both those two are wrong. We got this other Trinitarian. Well, what if I said this to you? That's, that's confusing. Here, yeah, it is. It is. What if, what if I said to you, um, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and I don't believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Then you're not Jehovah's Witness. Thank you. Exactly. So when someone says they're Trinitarian, 
but they deny what the Bible... It, it was a perfect response. He did a lot better than I did. ...teaches about the Trinity and what the Church historically has taught about the Trinity. They're not Trinitarians. Uh -huh. And the they Trinitarian comes in at the 4th century, right? So for no. 200 years, there was no Trinitarian... Oh, Trinitarian no, 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 no. No, a common, a common um, mishap, too, in cults is they have their revisionist histories. Uh, revisionist history, you know, they engage in a lot of that where, you know, you hear it all the time, you know, the Trinity didn't come, come along until the fourth century. Well, it's like, man, you, you, someone who's saying that does not know what they're talking about. Um, there is much uh, evidence of uh, the Trinity, maybe by, maybe not by name, but by concept where they're speaking of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit all being God and sharing in this oneness. And so um, I, I know I've done videos on that. Maybe I'll have to do something a little more recent to demonstrate this even further. Oh, no. No, no. Actually, from the beginning, from the very beginning of the church. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the second century just AD, one of the first fights the Christians got into was against Sibelius, uh -huh. which was modalism, essentially. Uh -huh. And they defined the Trinity. Tertullian was the, what defined the Trinity in the second century in 186 AD. So long before it's Nicaea or anything, Nicaea was a fight because Arius of Alexandria was teaching. Uh, actually, it's interesting. Arius of Alexandria was teaching what your church teaches, uh -huh. that Jesus was the first and greatest creation of God. Uh -huh. So Arius of Alexandria came into the church teaching what your church teaches, and the Christians universally refuted him uh, for what he was teaching. Uh -huh. So Nicaea was an example of uh, the first sort of instance of the Watchtower's belief that Jesus was created by the Father uh -huh. and the Christian Church came together and essentially cast him out as a heretic. Uh -huh. that, and uh, they were just supporting what the Church had always been teaching. Uh -huh. well, like I said, but good conversation yeah. to have, right? Guys. I'd love to chat with you again. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the deity of Christ, the doctrine of the Trinity is not a later development. Uh, it is very early attestation. And actually what we see is when councils arise, they're defending, they're defending it from heresies that pop up and schisms that pop up and things like that. Well, let me let me just say this about the conversation, because I think Jeff does. Jeff does an excellent job in engaging with people of different beliefs and things like that. And it's to be commended. Uh, there's no reason to get angry. And, and the other guy did well, too. This, you know, I think that sometimes helps if you have, a uh, you know, just a gentle spirit about you. You can uh, kind of, you know. I mean, control the level of conversation. Now, again, there are some people just angry. It doesn't matter what you say and how you say it. They're going to be angry. But again, I think uh, just how Jeff comes out, comes about, you know, it just it just brings a level head, level headedness to the conversation. And so I think that's something we can learn from and model despite who we are. And so hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully you learned a lot and just, you know, seeing some of the Jehovah's Witness beliefs in contrast with the Christian perspective. And so till the next time, y'all, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.